Hi, so in this video, we are going to be covering the topic binomial theorem of AS level. Now, if you've done ad maths, this topic would have been like a breeze for you. In fact, you're probably not even watching this video if you've done ad maths, uh, but you haven't done ad maths and you're struggling with it. So don't worry. After the next couple of videos, hopefully, inshallah, you will have everything sorted out. Okay, so now before we start and actually start expanding and using the formula and dive into the main concepts basically uh let's first understand what the term binomial basically means okay so by basically means two okay and nominal basically means terms okay so put that together and this means that you have two terms okay now this topic is called binomial theorem and it's also called binomial expansion so if it's binomial expansion what that basically means is that we are base we're expanding uh, an expression that has two terms and can have a power like for second for example three four five six seven okay so this this concept the formula basically comes in handy when you have like really large powers okay when you don't have uh, powers that are like three more than four or five okay uh you don't really have to use binomial theorem you can do away without using it but when you have like significantly large powers this is when this comes in handy okay so you must have noticed that I've made this table over here and I've written a couple of expressions. So what does that mean? Let's get straight into it. So let's say that you're asked to expand one plus X to the power one. Now, frankly speaking, there's nothing here to expand. So one plus X to the power one will just remain one plus X and that's it. Now, if you're asked to expand one plus X, the whole thing square. So I really hope you're not thinking it's one plus X square because that's a very uh, common error. So we'll have to use the identity, which is A plus B, the whole thing square. So that means, uh, which is a square plus two ab plus b square. So that means one plus two x plus x square, okay? And then if you're asked to expand one plus x, the whole thing cubed. Now chances are you, well, chances are you don't know the, the identity for this, but chances are if you're asked to do this, you will be able to do it by simply uh, taking the help of one plus x, the whole thing square, and then multiplying it by one plus x. Since you already know the expansion of one plus x, the whole thing square, and you know the expansion of one plus x. In fact, let's just do it. So one plus x, the whole thing square is basically one plus two x plus x square. And then we're multiplying this by one plus x. Okay, so let's see what happens. One into one is one, one into x is x, and then two x into one is two x, and then we have two x square. And then x squared into one is x squared, and then we have x cubed. Okay, so let's write this nicely. So we have one plus three x plus three x squared plus x cubed. Okay, now if you're asked to expand one plus x, the whole thing to the power four, again, chances are that you will be able to do it, but you would have to take help of the expansion of one plus x, the whole thing square, and then multiply it by one plus x, the whole thing square. Okay, so what if the power immediately turns to be nine then what do you do then of course if you try and go about it the conventional way then i'm afraid you'll only be able to solve one question in the exam okay you won't have time for anything else so this is basically where the binomial theorem comes in handy okay or the formula that we use in order to expand or uh, expressions that have like really large powers comes in handy okay now before i before i write that down there's something i want you guys to observe over here and that's going to come in handy and that is exactly why i've made this table over here so i want you to look at the power and i want you to look at the number of terms that we have towards the end okay so when the power is one okay so i'll make this table over here power and number of terms so when the power is one, the total number of terms happen to be two, okay? And when the power is two, the total number of terms happen to be three. And when the power is three, the total number of terms, let's count one, two, three, four. The total number of terms happen to be four. So that means when power is three, total number of terms are four. So this is basically something that can help us uh, determine the number of terms there will be beforehand, okay? So that means if the power is four, the number of terms will be five. So let's just generalize this since that's what we love doing. So that means if the power is n, the number of terms will always be one greater than the power that you have, okay? So this is basically, this was basically the purpose of making this table. And when exactly will this come in handy? For that, you don't have to worry about it. I will uh, be happy to point it out whenever we use it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna write down the formula that we're gonna be using for binomial theorem or binomial expansion. And chances are, if you're looking at it for the first time, you will freak out, but don't worry about it. We will become friends with it gradually once we do more and more example questions. So basically, 
the formula looks like this. If you have a plus b, the whole thing to the power n, okay? The way to expand this is through ncr, a raised to the power n minus r, and b to the power r. And r is something that's an integer, okay? At least in our syllabus, it's going to be an integer, okay? And, uh, sorry, n is something that's an integer, r, in our syllabus, that's going to be an integer, r is something that's going to be an integer anyway, okay? So R is something that starts from one and it goes all the way to N, okay? So that means it can take terms like zero, one, two, three, and then depending on whatever the value of N is, it's gonna go all the way to N. Okay, now, like I said, this probably may all seem alien to you and you're probably wondering like, what's N? Well, you may not be wondering what's N, but you're probably wondering what's R and what's C, okay? That is definitely something that you might be wondering over here and you're probably wondering what this NCR is. Now, everything will fall into place once we do some example questions. And that's exactly what I have planned over here. And we have some expansion examples and you've written, see, you can probably see that I've written the word easy over here. That's because these are easy questions. Okay, now, so let's get to work. I'm gonna write down the formula over here. Okay, and I want you to have the formula memorized as soon as possible. Okay, that'll save you a lot of time. All right, so if I compare this formula uh, if I compare one plus x to the power four with a plus b to the power n, I can see that a has been replaced by one and b has been replaced by x, okay? And n has been replaced by four. So that's what we're gonna do in the formula. So we'll start by r as zero, okay? So we're writing down the expansion and a couple of things that I wanna talk about is that first I will write down the expansion vertically, okay? You, if you've done this before, you might have written it horizontally, but I prefer to write it down vertically and then uh, write down the final answer horizontally. Now, if you have no idea what I just said, then don't worry about it. You'll understand in a second. Okay, so we start from r equals to zero. That's the first value of r that we're going to take. So this is how it goes. Four, c, zero, one to the power of four minus zero. So that's four, x to the power of zero, okay? And then we move one value up. So that means r is one, which means four c one, one to the power three and x to the power one. And then we move another term up. So four C two, one to the power two, x to the power two. And if you're wondering how will we find out four C one, four C two and all of that, don't worry about that. I'll help you out with that. So four C three, one to the power three, x to the power of three and four C four, one to the power zero, x to the power of four. Okay, so this is what I meant when I said that I will first write down the terms horizontally, and then in the end, we will write down the final answer. Uh, no, wait, vertically, and then in the end, we'll write down the final answer horizontally. Okay, so for C0, now you write four, and C is something that you can obtain by pressing shift and then pressing the division sign. Okay, so you'll see a C in your calculator, and then you write zero. So this is what it looks like. 4C0, and just to give you a quick walkthrough of how to get to C, so you press four, you press shift, so I've already pressed shift, and then you press the division sign right here, hopefully you can see it, and what do you see? You see C, so 4C0, so that's one. So I'll write down the terms one by one. One to the power four is one, x to the power zero is one, so that means our first term in this expansion is equal to one. Now just like that, let's work out 4C1, so that's four. One cube is going to be one, and x to the power one is going to be x. So now we have four x. Now one thing that I'm going to do immediately is that, notice that we have one as our first term. So that means right after four c whatever, we will have one raised to a certain power. And since one raised to whatever power you want or whatever power you have, it's always going to be equal to one. So I'm just going to conveniently ignore all of that, okay? So next we have is four c two, okay? Four c two, and if you're wondering, and I really hope you are, that how do we calculate the value of 4C2 without a calculator, then you will find out towards the end of this whole playlist, okay? So six, and then I've ignored one, as I mentioned earlier, so this becomes six X squared. And then four C3, that's four X cubed, so this becomes four X cubed. And then four C4 is gonna be one. Don't worry about how I know this. I will let you know about it very soon. And the X to the power four is X power four. Okay, so, now the final answer is of one plus x to the power four is one plus four x plus six x squared plus four x cubed plus x to the power four. And there you go, this is your final answer. Okay, now let's talk about question number two. So here we have one minus two x to the power five. Now, 
by the way, before we move on to the next question, so we had power four here. Let's count the number of terms. One, two, three, four, five. So that means we've done it correctly. So you can sort of use this a way to check your answer, okay? So again, we'll start from R equals to zero. Let's see what that looks like. Five C zero, one to the power five, minus two X to the power zero. And then we move one value up. Five C one, one to the power four, minus two X to the power one. And then just like that, five C two, one to the power three minus two x to the power two, and then five c three, one to the power two minus two x to the power three, and then we have five c four, and I'm out of breath, uh, one to the power one minus two x to the power of four, and then finally we have five c five, one to the power zero minus two x to the power five. Okay, so I should have written this alongside r equals to two, r equals to three, r equals to four, r equals to five. Okay, now this is not something that you have to write, by the way, this this column where I've written all the values of r, but uh, in the end, I will make you find out a pattern in which case this will come in handy, okay? In not in the end of like this video, but like later on. Okay, so the first term is going to be one immediately because five c zero is one, one to the power anything is one, minus two x to the power zero is one, okay? So five C one is five. Now here's something, when you have a minus sign, the signs are alternate. So that means if you start with plus, then it's going to be minus, then it's going to be plus, then it's going to be minus, okay? So five C one is five, and then five into minus two x is equal to minus 10 x. And then five C two is I think 10, but just to be on the safe side, yep, it's 10. And then minus two x whole squared is four x squared. So this becomes 40x squared. And then 5c3 is 10 into minus 8x cubed, because that's what minus 2x whole cubed is. So this is minus 80x cubed. And then we have 5c4, which is 5 into 16x to the power 4. And 5 times 16 is 80. So we have 80x to the power 4. And then 5c5 is 1. Minus 2 to the power 5 is just going to be minus 32 x to the power five. So once we've expanded, let's write down the final answer nicely. So one minus two x, the whole thing to the power five is equal to one minus 10 x plus 40 x square minus 80 x cubed plus 80 x to the power four minus 32 x to the power, whoops, sorry, 32 x to the power five. And there you go. Let's count the number of terms to be on the safe side. So power is five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, we should have had six terms and we do have six terms. So this was just an introduction. I was gonna say quick introduction, but it's over 12 minutes now. So it's not exactly a quick introduction, but an introduction to sort of get you uh, familiar with the formula and get you familiar with the expansion. Now there are a lot of uses of these expansions and uh, how does that work? Well, for that, you're gonna have to wait. And in the next video, I will show you some more complex examples, by the way, and we're gonna see how to work that out. It's the same formula, it's the same thing, it's just that the values are gonna be slightly different. And yeah, so that's about it. That's the end of this video. I hope you've understood everything that I've done in this video. And yeah, so take care. See you in the next one, bye-bye.